I just, uh, it just, you know, some, some days you, your head wants to explode. To avoid radiation leaks, the reactor had to be filled with water. I mean... <laughs> Engineers have started decommissioning the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. They face a serious challenge how to remove fuel debris from the damaged reactors. The only other people who have done that kind of work are engineers at the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant in the United States. One of its two reactors melted down in an accident 35 years ago. NHK obtained special permission from the U.S. government to access 1,000 videotapes that recorded engineers removing fuel debris from the plant. Today's Nuclear Watch takes a look at what the footage tells us. Three years after the accident, decontamination had reduced radiation levels enough to allow engineers to work inside the plant. Today is July 21. The TMI-2 inspection team is now on top of the TMI-2 reactor vessel and about to attempt to make the first inspection into the TMI-2 reactor vessel proper. They insert a camera into the reactor for the first time since the accident. We're now approaching three feet. We're, we are approaching four feet. We're approaching five feet. We're now five. That's something. We are now five feet into the core. Boy, a lot of debris. Jesus. Something that looks like rocks becomes visible. It's debris that is melted beyond recognition. The debris is solidified molten fuel. When water is pumped into a reactor after a meltdown, melted fuel cools down and solidifies. Experts later found more than a hundred tons of fuel debris. Engineers began removing debris six years after the accident. They set up a platform above the reactor. From there, workers remotely controlled a robot arm and tried to grab the debris on the bottom of the reactor 12 meters below. To avoid radiation leaks, the reactor had to be filled with water. The footage shows the many challenges the workers faced. There, you got it. It's under it now. Oh, that thing's loose. Oh, that'll come right out of it. All right, let me take you up there. Uh, okay, it's out of the can. Uh, I'm going to come back in. Engineers were in for some surprises. Found the bug. Painted bug. Heat inside the reactor caused microorganisms to grow there. That reduced visibility and slowed down the work. Engineers prodded the debris with iron bars several times, but nothing happened. They found the debris to be extremely hard. They had to scrape the debris off with a special drill before taking it out little by little. Five years later, they removed almost all the debris. William Austin was in charge of the work. He thinks the situation at Fukushima is a lot more challenging than Three Mile Island. The fuel at Fukushima Daiichi has melted through the reactor cores and has dropped to the bottom of containment vessels. Your orders of magnitude worse. It's, it's, uh, I, I mean, I can't conceive of how much difficulty you've got. The operator at Fukushima Daiichi wants to start removing fuel debris in 2020, but engineers at the plant are still looking for a way to do that. Engineers have to fill the reactor containment vessels with water, but the vessels have many leaks. On top of that, engineers at Fukushima have to deal with three reactors, not just one like at Three Mile Island. Residents near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have begun to return to their homes as workers decontaminate those regions. But a recent survey has found that radiation levels in some areas are still much too high. No shit. 
High radiation areas are designated as no entry evacuation zones. More than 20,000 people are registered as residents of those areas. They are unlikely to be able to return to their homes for several years. Oh, shit, okay. Okay. Environment Ministry officials did decontamination work in the zones to see how far they can reduce radiation levels. They chose residential areas, farmlands, roads, and public facilities as sampling spots. The test results show that an average radiation levels, uh, that average radiation levels rather, decreased by 50 to 70 percent after workers removed surface soil and washed roads and buildings. But the levels are still more than 10 times higher than the government standard for requiring decontamination. Ministry officials say it is difficult to completely remove radioactive substances that have penetrated mi uh, minute crevices on road surfaces and uh, roofs. I mean... <laughs> the results encouraged some residents but disappointed others. I want the government to decontaminate the area so we can get our lives back. We have no other choice but to go forward. The radiation levels are too high. I don't feel like going back even if the trial decontamination work succeeded in reducing the radiation. Officials will now consider whether to carry out full-scale decontamination in those areas while consulting with evacuees about whether they would like to return to their hometowns. The government plans to offer financial assistance to residents who give up their plans to return home and start a new life elsewhere. work outside the Fukushima Daiichi plant is another challenge in the aftermath of the 2011 disaster. Their slow progress is one reason why a small fraction of rice farmers have resumed planting, even after restrictions were lifted in the spring. The central government restricted rice farming in 12 municipalities near the Fukushima Daiichi plant after the nuclear accident due to fears of radioactive contamination. Officials lifted those restrictions and self-imposed suspensions this spring following a decline in radiation levels. Farmers were given the green light to grow crops again on about 5,200 hectares of land in six municipalities. But NHK has learned though that the planting resumed on only 2% of the fields. Officials say insufficient decontamination of rice fields and irrigation canals is one reason the fields are not growing crops. The central government says it wants to speed up the decontamination work. Officials say other issues that need addressing include decreased motivation among farmers. Many are also worried about rumors of contaminated harvests. Because it's a joke. It's a giant joke being played on everybody. And they still go through the motions like it matters. Sadly, there are people that still believe it. Public and private sectors are aiming to turn the city into an internationally competitive capital. It will also host the Olympics in 2020, sparking a boom in urban redevelopment projects. NHK World's Corando Tango reports. Hello, Mirai Tokyo! Developers in central Tokyo have opened what is now the second tallest building in the city. The Tranomon Hills skyscraper stands 247 meter high. The building has space for offices and conference facilities. Developers hope it will become a gateway for global business. For people who want to live there can rent a high-end condominium for about 60,000 U.S. dollars a month. And anyone planning a brief stay in the Towers Hotel will spend about $600 a night to sleep in a room this size. It looks beautiful. I've heard it's got a Japanese motif because of the Olympics. It would be great if these areas become more vibrant. As the road running under the building leads to the Olympic district, I think this region will become more of a center of culture and business. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government designated the Tuanomon district as a special economic zone. Officials hope to attract foreign firms by offering tax breaks, relaxed regulations, and financial support. One of the characteristics of Toronto Hills is this road. It leads underneath the complex and will be extended to the Tokyo Bay Area by 2020. 
It's just one of many projects underway ahead of the Olympics. Officials are supporting redevelopments like this one. Tokyo! Yeah. Tokyo will host the Summer Olympics in six years. The athletes' village and training facilities will be built in the Bay Area. And many of the venues hosting the games will be close by. But all of this development comes with challenges. They won't die. In fact, that'll be our motto. They won't die. The government plans to rebuild the national stadium. The cost of the project is estimated at $3 billion. Officials have scaled back initial plans to cut costs in half. But vast amounts of public taxes will be spent on the facility. Government leaders are having a hard time meeting needs for skilled labor. Communities rebuilding from the March 2011 disaster have put added pressure on the labor pool. The government recently decided to ease restrictions on foreign workers. 70,000 construction workers will be allowed into the country to solve the shortage. The public and private sectors face many challenges in making Tokyo a major player on the global stage. With the Olympic Games coming in six years, they will have to tackle those challenges head on. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is trying to set a new strategy in motion to spur economic growth. He has called on a panel of cabinet ministers and experts to work out an effective policy package to achieve that goal. Abe issued the instructions to members of the Industrial Competitiveness Council when he was presented with draft measures to revitalize the economy. Here's the finance minister, Taro Asso. Remember, everybody's an Asso. Who can forget Taro Asso? <laughs> the biggest Asso in Japan. Who can forget him? He's the finance minister, right? Yes. What an Asso that Asso is. <laughs> well, he's in this headline. Let elderly people, quote, hurry up and die, says Japanese minister. Taro Asso says he would refuse end-of-life care and would feel bad knowing treatment was paid for the, by the government. So he was doing the rounds selling people on this new budget they have you know, for the new government. Heaven forbid, he said, if you are forced to live on when you want to die, I would wake up feeling increasingly bad knowing the treatment was all being paid for by the government. The problem won't be solved unless you let them hurry up and die. The draft calls for growth-oriented reforms in corporate taxation. The key is corporate tax cuts. It also proposes changes in employment and work practices. It says managers should evaluate their workers by how well they, pe they perform, not how many work hours they put in. A virtuous cycle is emerging in the nation's economy. We should not allow it to remain temporary. We should make it sustainable. The key is to free the potential of Japanese businesses and people so we can all rise up to our challenges. The cabinet is expected to approve the package later this month. A Japanese government report says the country's real estate market is pulling out of asset deflation. It notes land prices in metropolitan areas have started rising. That is due in part to development projects for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Government officials say in an annual white paper that the upturn in land prices is especially pronounced in Tokyo's Bay Area, near the planned site for the Olympic Games. The paper points out that land prices in regional cities are also rebounding due to increasing demand for development. The white paper calls for stepped-up efforts to revitalize the markets for existing homes as well as land plots. It says this will make sure that the markets will emerge completely out of drawn-out asset deflation. And another white paper is out, this one on tourism. In the report, government officials stress the need to build better transit systems to prepare for the Olympics and also to achieve a goal of attracting 20 million tourists a year from overseas. The document says the government should learn from other cities that have successfully hosted the Olympic Games. Ahead of the 2020 event, it urges the government to hold more international conferences and other events to promote tourism.